Oh, thank you, Pedro. Let's go like that. I will save you a little bit of trouble. <laughs> so what you see behind me is uh, my office in Zagreb. I'm uh, here as a, working as an assistant professor. Uh, let's say early stage, but not so uh, young anymore. I, well, I don't, at least I don't feel like that, <laughs> especially in these times. But um, I'm not here just as a professor. I'm here on behalf of Region 8 Young Professionals. I'm chairing my team of, uh, well, 11 of us. Uh, we are covering uh, 53 affinity groups in uh, Europe, Middle East, and Africa. And uh, we do fun things. So I will show you that in my presentation. Uh, I will also, uh, one part of the presentation itself is a little bit personal experience as it is, uh, yeah, uh, the best part you can talk about networking is, uh, I guess, the personal experience. So you will see uh, just a little bit tiny of uh, my path, but today I think I'm uh, striving to put together industry and academia to, to do together things. I think that this is like a personal call and uh, it seems that it's happening. At least it was before the epidemic part. We will see now how it, how it goes. Okay, apart from that, uh, I'm saying hello to parts, to members of my team. I see uh, Manuel Palesteros Carvalho is here. Thank you for the organization. Uh, well, uh, let me start by uh, buenas tarde, todos. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, to start with the presentation, it's called Grow Your Network, Grow Your Career. Uh, when you talk about young professionals, uh, it's, it's not easy to understand this uh, term. So when, when you, you know, you either see one part, of the young part or the professional part. So you rarely see the both of these uh, times together. Why? Because it is uh, some kind of uh, oxymoron. But uh, who are we? is uh, what I like to say that we are a set of uh, young engineers and scientists uh, who are ambitious enough so we believe we can do our part in advancing technology of humanity as it is the main goal of IG2E, at least in our own way, in our own perspective and uh, in our own tiny bit of contribution. So, as I uh, mentioned, we are consisting of both these words, so both young and the attributes that go together with the young, such as energy, passion, engagement, fun networking, potential, you know, all the, all the great things and the interesting things that we have. On the other side, we are also professional, which means we have some kind of expertise. We do conferences, we have ambitions, we have already established a little bit of our careers. And we are, let's say we are at this stage, we are pretty much confident that we can do work that we can uh, collaborate that we can do all the fun parts and uh, indeed we do have both of these uh, sets of attributes and we can do both but most of the time <laughs> we are just doing quite the opposite and this is indeed our superpower so when you say uh, we have young expertise we are making conferences very young uh, we have young ambition and on the other side we have a lot of professional energy and passion and uh, fun networking so this thing has to be introduced in order to make this uh, both these things reachable to all the audiences. So uh, to bring the profession to young people, but also to bring fun to the senior people, because they tend to forget that profession can be fun as well. Uh, so we make one third of members in uh, IEEE Region 8, and uh, it's pretty much the same uh, situation in the rest of the world. So our among 420,000 members, we are consisting one third of the membership. And so what do we do? <laughs> well, we launch rockets, as you can see here. This was really a footage from our event. Uh, it was happening in Barcelona in 2018, and it was called Young Professionals in, in Space. So it's not just launching rockets, uh, it's making a mini uh, satellites uh, workshop about electronics, about uh, communications and uh, a lot of uh, fun part as well. We also had many renowned speakers uh, from uh, European Space Agency, from uh, the NASA, private sector and so on. At this point, I could see that uh, Spain is really well established uh, there as well. And I met some great people, I feel Laura is part of us here, so Laura, hello to you as well. Uh, we did the next year in uh, Dubai in 2019, and this year we were supposed to do it in Portugal. 
launching rockets you launch careers and at this point let's say 15 years after your graduation of your first uh, bachelor's degree uh, you are still at the early beginning of your stage and you have not yet decided whether you're going to profile yourself to the technical to the purely professional or what we call a more of a soft skills person or finally go and start something on your own and uh, do the entrepreneurship part but what's the biggest thing uh, among us is that you can do all of this at the same time with steering a little bit to your own way. As I say, the difference between these three things is the thinnest at uh, the age of young professionals. So uh, I remember my student days and uh, being part of IEEE, uh, we mostly wanted to organize some kind of uh, social networking events and uh, organization as such, you know, like a large congress says, lots of traveling. But finally, IEEE is a professional association and this is the most important part is what is your profession and how can you uh, develop it with IEEE. So this part, this is, uh, as I said, uh, after graduation, you choose where to go yourself. You go to academy, industry, or you want to start your own business, you go uh, this way. And then, Let's say one year is very exciting for you, then you are settling down, uh, you are learning new technologies, tools, relations, and after one year, you think you are very confident in yourself. So that happens. What then? What do you do? And then you'll understand, okay, it's not just uh, to get everything that you already know. The most important part for you, for your company, and for your uh, uh, boss as well is uh, how to attract new knowledge, how to, to attract new things. And this is especially important in the electrical engineering. Uh, so how do we do it? We make a combination of our heritage, of the previous knowledge of the tradition of the company. We have a lot of brainstorming uh, meetings to get new approaches on uh, fresh ideas, on uh, new technologies and so on. And then finally, we are also trying to seek out new opportunities. What is the needs? What are the markets that are being developed? Uh, as you can see, we are witnessing it uh, very much these days. And then finally, also, uh, multidisciplinarity is a very hot topic these days. We, as electrical engineers, we are digitalizing everything. So that means we can do a lot of uh, opportunities in sec sectors that were not digitalized before. And yes, you can do it within your own company, but uh, most of the new things are coming outside of the company or university or whatever you uh, end up. So this is additionally boosted, and this is why the networking and contacts are very important, especially during the first steps, because the contacts, it's like the knowledge, you know, you once you acquire it, you maintain it for the rest of, the, of your life. Uh, you have to nurture it, of course, but still they remain there. So this is uh, 10 years ago. Uh, this is me. As part of Student Branch Zagreb, uh, my final year of uh, master study, I uh, organized a visit trip to a company. Uh, at that time, it was called Exor, and they did, uh, well, let's say, process automation. And uh, well, let's say a few months after that, they really offered me a job position to go and work for them, which was quite something because uh, if you remember, 2010, which was a year of the toughest crisis, uh, the economical part. So you couldn't find a job very much. But then at this point, they already could see, you know, the, this is a person that is doing something else besides what he really needs to do, you know, just uh, taking care of his grades. And that was really nice step uh, to do. But at this point, uh, I was also offered that position as a PhD student at my uh, faculty, where I'm working today now as assistant professor. And this is a uh, what I choose uh, at that point. Well, at this point, probably I would be richer if I went to industry, but still I like my position very much. And one of the reasons is that uh, uh, the same company, 10 years later, that uh, event, uh, we had together held a meeting and uh, formed our project. And uh, right now we are forming their new research and development department. They don't have one yet but they are now establishing it because of our collaboration. And it's an uh, R&D department uh, is focused on artificial intelligence in uh, vending machines. They changed a little bit of their uh, focus, 
well, widened it and uh, they see that it's really developing market and they see that this is also a very new thing. By the way, what's new for them, we already did in, uh, at the end of 1990s. So we are collab you know, combining our knowledge and expertise together with uh, their access to big data that they now have. And uh, we are going to establish a new department together. It's a really big, uh, it, it, yeah, it's, so far it already involved some 20 people employed in the project. So we will see how it develops. Right but apart from that, uh, well, this wouldn't happen, uh, you know, well, this would never happen if I uh, stayed as employee or if I only did the uh, research at my PhD. Uh, well, perhaps it would happen, but not at my age, not right now. Uh, and uh, one part, one huge part that it happened is because of the IEEE itself. Not for the IEEE like, like that, but because of the, all the skills and all the people you met and all the skills you developed together with these people and all the confidence that you acquired and all the uh, events that you organized, people uh, you talked with, you know, all the perspectives, all the, uh, all the new things that you learned that they're coming from, uh, from these people and that's, and that's how it works. And uh, today I'm also, as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm chairing my team of uh, uh, 11 people and they are all uh, very special people in their professional life. Uh, so I take also this opportunity to say hi to them because I think some of them are listening. Well, Manuel is here for sure. Uh, and uh, if you talk with all of them, they had all very similar stories and a very nice uh, career already at this early stage. And uh, what we do as the committee is we take care of uh, 53 young professionals affinity group. Uh, one of that is one of them is Spain. Uh, you see Arturo here as the chair. And uh, what we are doing is we are trying to engage them to do things like we did before when we were chairs of young professionals affinity group. And we are doing that very well. As you can see, we are taking one third of the whole IEEE and uh, we are as young professionals, we did more than 700 events in 2019 and in Region 8, more than 200 events. These are only the reported ones because young professionals usually don't like the administration very much. So this uh, number is even, even larger in reality. So some of the ex exceptional people is uh, uh, Piotr Graka from Poland and uh, my former affinity group uh, in the Croatia section. Uh, they did well. Uh, this was 2018 award. And uh, in 2019, uh, together with many different people, we as a committee initialized more than, uh, as you can see here, 46 very large events, uh, usually more than 100 people. And some of the photos are already here. And uh, that's, that's the places where you meet people. So how do you do it? You have your local affinity group, uh, Arturo as the chair, as I mentioned, and they, uh, submit some kind of idea to one of these three programs like STEP, Student Transition and Elevation Partnership, Meetup, uh, nice uh, social meeting events next to the large conferences. You can indeed meet very expert people and very renowned scientists in the area. And then finally, local activity funding is whatever you would like to do. Uh, you can get $750 for that. And this is the website where you can apply it. Uh, some of more mem uh, benefits and some of all more our programs that I'm going to mention uh, in the next few slides. But what is interesting, these three occurred from um, ideas that were developed uh, from you as volunteers, from members of student branches and members of affinity groups. And in particular, very much in the region eight as uh, last two chairs of young professional committee really come from region eight. Okay, and then 2020 is completely different than everything uh, we had before. And it's, it's uh, unprecedented times. And uh, as we like to say, uh, what we do is uh, we transfer the knowledge and we connect the people as IEEE. And in 2020, that really means doing it online. And this is like a, a joke, internal joke from my team, because um, the first thing you would like, you wanted to do is to do, to do something with your own camp. How, how can you support uh, people around you, humanity itself? And then finally, after you know one month of this uh, impression, you 
finally go back to your uh, original idea, I'm an electrical engineer, what can electrical engineers do the pandemic, pandemics? So what we can do is uh, first we can uh, engage other electrical engineers to do something uh, with us together. And this is uh, one program that, that we established, it's called Young Professionals Home Offices. As you can see, we are sharing, uh, you know, like a home offices from people, from our volunteers in UK. I'm sure you can recognize some of the people in these photos as well. It's a social media based campaign and uh, we would like it to transfer the message that uh, the work is very much still getting done. Not in a fancy way, as you can see, uh, well, not here. All of us in the photos have very nice uh, offices, uh, but some of the volunteers you can see that uh, they were really squeezed in tiny boxes, but still the electrical engineer, engineering is not stopping during pandemics. That was the message. I think we passed it very well and we gathered more than uh, 25 of these uh, photos. So thank you also Spanish, Spanish part for your contribution. And uh, yeah, you can find all of them on the Facebook page. The one very uh, important part that we established is the, the program we called Connecting Experts. It was uh, initially intended uh, for bringing distinguished lecturer. This is like a, the highest uh, renowned engineers and scientists from IEEE that we can uh, get somewhere. And we intended to send them to uh, in industry sector, to local companies in uh, sections. But then we rebranded it a little bit and then started to put it uh, online, a series of webinars. And uh, you can see here the May schedule, which is uh, happening right now. Uh, four of those we already held. Some more emerged during this time and uh, one more will be on uh, Thursday in collaboration with Women in Engineering. So some of the slides you can see they are a little bit here and uh, you can see on this photo one we had a talk with an astronaut uh, from Canada so at this point you could really make this impression that uh, the world is a very small place when you are transferring to online and uh, the IGPLE as the organization can uh, match distant people in a you know one click and uh, we are all together in one WebEx call in particular this one had uh, about 500 people watching it. So how is it different? As you remember, the three circles uh, we are aiming towards technical, professional and entrepreneurial part. And uh, very frequently, all three together. For example, some of these, these speakers before, well, most of these speakers before uh, have in fact already established their own companies. But uh, before that, they were part of some research groups. So the companies are spin-offs from universities or larger companies and so on. So this is a very interesting, uh, you know, uh, success stories that you can transfer to your members. Uh, we are doing, we are util utilizing social media impact. Uh, this is also one part of it. Together with the student activities committee, uh, we have, I think, the most uh, reach out of the to our members from uh, social media, as we are the youngest part of the, of the association. Uh, joined by some other people, joined by different affinity groups, uh, so far Sweden, Denmark and Turkey. Uh, we were talking uh, with Spain uh, also, so we will share your... We are doing it in a similar way as you are doing this webinar now, but uh, on the more, let's say, technical talks. Uh, so this is example, uh, reach out of social media, you can see 7,300 people at least clicked in some way to this post. We are also establishing uh, virtual reality software, so this will uh, happen, I think, very soon. One other example is our entrepreneurship initiative. Um, we have kicked it off in 2018, and in 2019, we have the first pilot uh, of ambassadors and events, and uh, it, it was held in 20 countries uh, over Region 8. Uh, it is uh, intended as a series of entrepreneurship uh, talks about success stories and so on, but also local competition for the local startups or uh, that are in the uh, ideation phase or in the already established business and they are looking uh, to scale up. So we picked the three of the best from all these 30 countries where some of them uh, didn't wish to participate in the end. But uh, the ones we had, uh, we picked up, let's say, 35 of the startups. So here are some examples of uh, 
photos of the local events and it was uh, really, really uh, well attended and a uh, great success story from our point. It has also been uh, funded from IGPLE Foundation as a separate program, so we are now scaling it up in 2020. But what I wanted to say is the, it, this is not uh, just the entrepreneurship, you know, it's a tech entrepreneurship. So that's what we do. You know, if you remember that first slide, uh, we are making the entrepreneurship uh, at the same time uh, young and uh, technical or the electrical engineering in this part. So these are some examples of the startups that have pitched and you can see like a remote uh, uh, clinic or some kind of smart garden and uh, robots that uh, destroy sweet by laser, some kind of gesture control and uh, very um, elaborate bio waste recycling facility from Nigeria, if I remember correctly. But also not just the, the technical part and prototypes and the innovations finally, because what, that's what they are. Uh, people who participate also develop a lot of presentation and uh, business skills. This is very nice to have in the electrical engineering and also very nice to have technical part of the entrepreneurship in the entrepreneurship itself. So uh, a little bit of more numbers. Uh, we had uh, these 35 competitors from local section. We have put them in one large pool and uh, we have been choosing uh, six winners. Uh, four by the committee and two by the social media audience. So we were fortunate that this one was uh, coinciding with the pandemics. Uh, so we did it really online. And you can see here it reached more than 150,000 people. So uh, this is good for us, of course, but more than that, it's really good for the startups because so many people watch their ideas and they already have some kind of the global impact. Uh, at, you know, as you remember, I said at one click of your mouse. And uh, what is very nice uh, coinciding with this presentation is that currently there is an open call for ambassadors and it's open till June 15th. So if you are interested, uh, visit the social media page and you can apply as an ambassador or hold your local event, whether it's going to be online as a form of a hackathon or a datathon this year, or as we believe that by the end of the year, it will be possible to meet in person as well. So uh, this is uh, all from my presentation. There are a little bit uh, various inputs, uh, but most of all, I wanted to share with you some ideas on how you can uh, engage your local community and what you can do to broaden your network. And finally, it's going to be really useful in your career. And it's never going uh, like uh, you are just committed to the career or you're just committed to volunteering. It has to be always uh, interactive. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. And then you put what you have learned in the one part to the other part and uh, from the other part to the first part and so on. And it's really a lifelong uh, learning. So thank you for your attention. Uh, if you want, so you can always reach us at this uh, email and uh, I'm here at your disposal for the questions and answers part of the session. Thanks a lot, Minko. A pleasure to hear from you. Uh, we have a question from from Aida Junquera. Uh, she's asking about uh, how can a student uh, join to IEEE Young Professionals? Yeah, so um, you can be, you know, officially Young Professionals if you have finished your bachelor degree or your first degree. After that, uh, when you are joining uh, IEEE or renewing your membership, you just add Young Professionals and they are free of charge. It's uh, zero dollars to uh, join young professionals together with uh, your IEEE membership. But uh, you, don't you don't need to wait uh, till graduation because uh, our mission as young professionals is to engage students already. So you can, uh, we are most, well, many of our events are really focusing uh, students and we would like to, to, to acquire skills or knowledge or contacts that are uh, going to help you in uh, building your career or in finding your first job and so on. You don't wait, need to wait uh, till you graduate uh, completely to master's degree. You can already start it in the early days of your bachelor's degree. It will form your start way of study. It will uh, perhaps even bring you a uh, bachelor or master's thesis in collaboration with the company you would like to go up that and so on. It's really pays off to, uh, to, look, it, to look into it. 
And right now, uh, we have Arturo in this call. You can ask him uh, what are the plans for the Spanish young professionals. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, if uh, anybody has questions, uh, you can just uh, unmute the microphone and, and ask to Vinco. Or if you prefer, uh, you can write down in the chat and then Vinco will answer our questions about uh, young professionals and, and your doubts about it and the content of the presentation. Hi, um, is Arturo here? Uh, not really a question as you wanted to say thanks to Vinco because I mean, we, uh, I see that as young professionals and at a young age level, especially, we are taking advantage of the situation and instead of saying, okay, we have this whole pandemic situation, there's nothing we can do. Actually, it's benefiting us in many aspects because with this, uh, with these activities that we're doing online, I feel that we are more engaged, um, collaborating at a higher level than, the, than, we were, than what we were doing before. So it's, it's a good thing and keep up the, the good job, the good work, sorry. So yeah, that's and to say thank you to Vinco. And he's seeing a manual, all, all these people. <laughs> thank you very much, Arturo. Uh, we are also really glad to have you in the chair of young professionals in Spain. So well done so far. Thanks. OK. Meanwhile, uh, somebody asked other question. Uh, I I would like to ask you, Vinco. Uh, do you know uh, which is the limit, the upper limit, to be young professional? Uh, <laughs> well, there is no, as we we uh, like to say, as long as you feel young and professional at the same time. <laughs> so you can always officially you can always uh, opt for the young professionals membership from the administrational part but as i mentioned uh, we uh, think of young professionals as people of uh, 15 years after bachelor degree so for example in croatia that would mean until the age of uh, 37 or 38 37 would be your last year okay thank you <laughs> <laughs> we have a comment from Antonio. That's really true. What you wrote. There are yeah. professionals who are the same time life members. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so life member, if I remember correctly, the definition is the time of uh, well years of uh, IEEE, uh, being part of IEEE, and uh, years of your age yeah, when you sum it up, it has to be over one hundred. We are we are developing now the IEEE ETA Kappa Nu uh, chapter inside the UNED, and we have some some of the students there have 55 years old, <laughs> because UNED is <laughs> different is in this way. We will have young professionals of 55 and 60 years old, but they are young professionals too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but this is really important part. Uh, if you are uh, a uh, university professor and you would like to reach your students uh, in a way that they understand you know this you are a young professional in fact by all <laughs> of course <laughs> and we may engineering too then we i can be there <laughs> yeah and we that is very true what we uh what we like the most is to have all the diversity in age uh at our meetings so these meetups as I mentioned, the very large events, uh, the social gatherings next to the conferences are exactly this kind of thing. You can at the same time uh, meet the uh, master students, uh, PhD students, uh, you know, when the, on the other side, uh, conference keynote speakers, which are the senior professors, so you got a lot of expertise behind them, a lot of experience, and also of the global renowned part in this. And it's also, as I mentioned, uh, it's very important to reach out of your company for when you want to bring new knowledge. 
uh, these meetups all in fact have all just uh, 50 percent of ieee members the next the rest of the members are outside of ieee so this is how we also attract this uh, knowledge and ideas uh, from beyond the organization Do we have uh, some other questions? Yes, yeah, so, there is a chat from Manuel that say that what should be the next uh, connection experts? session let me see if i can share it again uh, just a moment uh, so uh, so this uh, this one impact of pandemics on european power grid will be at uh, thursday at 13 uh, hours of uh, Greenwich Mean Time. So that means uh, 15 hours uh, in Spain time. It will be performed by Ana Sigaran Romero. Uh, she's uh, chairing the Women in Engineering and the, the Region 8. But apart from that, she's also working in the company, a power company called 50 Hertz. Uh, so she will have really nice uh, insight on the European market, uh, the European power grid, the European power market. Uh, the company uh, is situated in Germany, and uh, you can see obviously that Anna Sigaran Romero is not a German person. <laughs> <laughs> so this is one of the best parts. As you can see, uh, we have women in engineering here. We also have a young professional Sweden, and uh, one the new series of events will be ready for June. It will also have a I think five uh, separate events and we have also very nice uh, experts from for example from Mozilla uh, Foundation itself they will talk about uh, how do large companies gather uh, data for the during pandemics you know how to uh, estimate the spreading of the virus and so on so th then we will also have a so by the way this one is also organized by a Swedish young professor Professionals, we are having something from Denmark, uh, we are having something from Turkey, Turkish affinity group, and we are also having something on our own. You know, like uh, our committee is inviting some people to talk about smart grids and so on. Uh, we send it as an e notice on this flyer, and then you can uh, opt for uh, you know, like a regular email before the every session. And if there is some uh, new sessions that we have not estimated one month. Uh, in advance, like this astronaut talk that we were talking about, uh, then you can have a separate email on it for this part. Okay, so uh, to conclude this uh, part, join us on Thursday at uh, 15 hours in the WebEx. Find us on uh, Facebook and on our YouTube channel. Uh, I see also a question from uh, Brian. As someone who has been part of IEEE in a managing, managing like position for both student and YP, would you say it is easier to engage students than young professionals to take part of events? Any tips on how to approach young professionals? Um, well, this is always a hard thing to say, not because uh, it's hard in general, but it's very uh local based you know so you have you really need to talk with uh people in spain to see what they are really interested in and uh this is why the best thing uh we have is affinity groups in sections like i already mentioned a few times uh, arturo and his team in uh, spain uh, so what we have uh really learned that they that all the young professionals like is uh in, indeed uh success stories of some way so you can uh, see and learn people path in different uh, areas 
uh, for example, uh, this uh, entrepreneurship part is really interesting to young professionals, not because everybody would like to be entrepreneurs, but it's also a way how you to conform your uh, ideas, research into a business and establish it even within your own company or within a research project in academia and so on. This is really, uh, really one part. And the second part is uh, social networking, definitely. But not just, you know, let's throw a party. But, uh, well, that works too, of course. But uh, in this sense, let's uh, throw a technical party. And, uh, you know, once you are really relaxed, uh, which is not a problem in Spain, obviously, uh, well, southern part at least, but, uh, you know, once you are really relaxed in the ambience that is looking like a very relaxed way, then you are easier to talk with uh, senior professors and experts that you, you know, you would hesitate to approach and ask questions otherwise. So this is a really, really important part. That's what we say when we say we are making conferences younger, you know. And for students, also one big part is uh, definitely traveling. So I see that you are doing that in Spain. I think it's really working very well. OK. Thanks a lot, Vinko. Thanks for, for this webinar. And thanks for, for your uh, knowledge about young professionals, proposals, and upcoming sessions. And thanks a lot for answering the questions. Thank you, Pedro. It was really an honor to be here. Nice to nice contribute to your program. This is really great thing that you have. And uh, it's really nice that you can, as I mentioned, uh, you know, putting together the diversity in age, I still, I really see that it's we're working very well in the Spain section. It's really a nice story. I'm going to share it uh, between our section as well in Croatia and uh, among the other affinity groups and so on. Great. Thanks a lot. <laughs> and thanks for all attendees to being part of this of this webinar. If you have more questions, uh, don't hesitate. Uh, you can ask uh, directly to John Professionals R8 as uh, Binko shared uh, their, their email to their contact email. And take care and see you in next sessions. Bye. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, bye. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.